Today's episode is brought to you by Dr. Jeffrey Halstead, DMD. Dr. Jeffrey Halstead has been Canandaigua's hometown dentist for more than 35 years, offering routine dental care as well as cosmetic dentistry, implants, and dentures by their highly trained and experienced staff. Visit them online at canandaiguadentistry.com or find them on Facebook and Instagram. Today we continue our series previewing local elections across the Finger Lakes by catching up with one of the candidates running for Geneva City Council. James Petropoulos joined me via Zoom this week to talk about his reason for running and his goals if elected. We pick up the conversation with James discussing how he says much of his campaign centers around civility and treating first responders and other elected officials with respect. Uh, I mean, I learned basic firefighting in the Navy. It's you know a little different in civilian life. You're dealing with rescuing people, not putting out a fire on a ship. But again, we cannot disparage our first responders. All right, I've been to too many council meetings and you know, as a member of the ethics board, I fielded several complaints where the chief of the department or one of the firefighters is being disparaged by an elected official and then they file a complaint. And it's why, why do we disparage them? Bottom line, they have turnout gear. I take it, you know what that means. That's the gear that they wear to go in and fight fires. Um, to me, that is the equivalent of the gear uh, military personnel, particularly in the army are issued. Right. If your turnout gear or your military equipment is obsolete, out of date or in need of changing out, are you going to go, you know, yeah, you're going to go in a battle regardless. The firefighters are going to go regardless to fight that fire. But what about their own safety? We need to think about these things now. Um, it's really just a question of not I, th I really think it boils down to not disparaging them, not considering them a burden, but rather something the community feels safe about and again it most the overwhelming majority of the people in this city do feel that way they they want to feel safe they see a police car go by they feel safe they see the fire trucks they feel like yes they'll respond so hopefully uh that answers at least the first question you uh, you mentioned infrastructure and obviously mm -hmm. flooding made headlines uh, over the summer uh, what would you like to see city council do, or how would you like to see city council approach some of its infrastructure issues uh, moving forward? Obviously well, there's no silver bullet, right? No, there isn't. Uh, but what we can do, I talked to a, a, a neighbor actually a few blocks from me that happens to work in the middle school and I see her every day and we chat, but I didn't know she was a neighbor. She's on Elm street in ward five. They did get flooded. Why? There's another uh, couple on, um, I believe it's Oak street that, you know, we're trying to help out through the, the Freemasons and passing the word, their foundation collapsed during a heavy rain. I mean, we've read about these, we've heard about these. Um, first thing to do is look at the basic infrastructure, the, the water supply for starters, the storm drains, all right? Are they civil war? Era, or are they more modern? If so, are they uh, of such a that they can handle the increased capacity of heavier rainstorms that we've been getting? And you know whether or not you believe in global warming i you know I, I have no reason not to but the point is storms have been heavier and uh, are we equipped for that i mean i myself am uh, outfitting our buildings with six inch gutters rather than the five inch because again it could carry more water get it off our roof but what if you know what happens when it goes down the the storm drain does it empty or does it back up so there are a lot of issues our roads our bridges i mean it's just like new york city where i spent most of my life you cannot defer these things really the first step would probably be to just inventory what we do have and in what condition we think they're in prioritize and get to the worst of it first but stay on top of it don't just slack off entirely you know yeah um when you when somebody says to you, and I'm sure you've heard it a, a thousand times so far, I want you to keep my taxes low uh, in light of the two things that we just talked about, which can get expensive. What's oh, yeah. your answer? What's your answer for them when they say that to you? Really, the bottom line is economic 
development and uh, priority of how we spend our taxes. Obviously, things like public safety and infrastructure are necessary. Um, and again, I've looked at the city budget. We don't have an hour to talk about it, but uh, really it's it's uh, attracting businesses and residents. And uh, that all boils back down to um, a community that does not hate each other, does not disparage our own city. Uh, you know, there's a lot of us versus them. And most people are, you know, us versus neither. You know, we don't want to hear any of that. We want to, that community back. So really the first way to attract residents is not by disparaging the city of Geneva, but by putting it as the gem of the Finger Lakes, which we really are. I call it the de facto capital of the Finger Lakes. We're best located. We have the Welcome Center. We're right on the lake. Um, bringing down taxes will happen gradually. First, you know, cutting spending, I don't know. I mean, it depends on what we're spending on. Uh, again, we could talk about that another time, but bringing, increasing the tax base, that would require attracting not only just small businesses, but industry. We have room for industry, green industry. Yeah, we don't want smoke sack kind of thing. We don't have the, the room for that, but we can attract bigger businesses um, and we can certainly uh, attract more residents. I mean, this town, you know, has lost probably I don't know, 3,000 people in the last 10 years. I can't remember. I did the census, but, you know, there's room for them. There's room to grow. No shortage of tourism growth across the entire region. Uh, when you think about the lake in terms of what kind of asset that is and you think about economic development, what does successful economic development look like uh, in your mind with Seneca Lake being right there? Well, for one thing, it's beautiful as it is. There's room. I mean, obviously, a lot of people don't want any development on a lake. I don't want to really see condos there because that's just going to trust me on that one. <laughs> Nobody knows how to make them look pretty. But but um, we can add to what we have. We, For example, we have the marina that's uh, that uh, the state just issued a grant for. So why not? a live bait shop, a fishing gear rental place, you know, little things like that, which would enhance what we already have. And again, we don't need, you know, leaps and bounds. And, uh, you know, my experience with putting up condos is that two thirds of them remain empty, you know, depending on the market, leave the lake as is. People like going down there, like going for walks, but there's room for a bait shop. There's room for, you know, little businesses that won't compete with the downtown businesses, but at the same time will increase the overall revenue and the overall enjoyment that uh, tourists expect when they come here. Uh, environment. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go right um, ahead. Right I was just, just to add to that environmentally, um, you know, right here in the city. I mean, I, I know that the water quality here is better than say, uh, you know, Cayuga Lake, but we can always do better. We can, uh, you know, talk about and run off whatever the city's got here all that salt from the melting snow you know maybe we can there's a way to mitigate that but in the meantime we do want to stay on top of the cleanliness of the lake because that is our drinking water supply so um when those issues come up i will pay extra extra close attention uh last month we saw the report that forecasts a 40 percent increase uh, in seniors living in the finger lakes by 2040 while all younger age groups are expected to to decline seven to fourteen percent. Uh, obviously, Geneva has colleges there. The colleges there. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you like to see the city do to maybe kind of reverse that trend? Since it does have a wealth of youth on hand, you know that are one click away from being city residents if they choose to stay after graduation. Well, again, that all boils down to community and us versus them and getting rid of that mentality. And really the best way to do it is by setting a good example. And, you know, um, there are, you know, I mean, I've heard on the street, you know, recreation, you know, maybe there's room in the, one of the strip malls for an arcade. You know, that's something for the kids to do. College age kids, what we want to do is we want to show them that you can, in fact, start a business here and succeed. It's just a question of, uh, you know. Uh, making it easy for them to do and being more welcoming to their efforts. I already know of at least uh, two younger people that wish to start businesses here. Um, as a landlord of multi-use buildings, I know what it takes to get someone into a storefront, et cetera. As far as the seniors go now, yeah, we're going to outnumber the uh, young people. So we also need uh, a centrally located senior center. I don't know that we have one. So the bottom line there is uh, 
we we need to find where to put one. I mean, I know I've heard from enough seniors. They need somewhere to stay cool in the summer, somewhere to stay warm in the winter, somewhere to get to chat with each other more frequently. You know, not all seniors live next to each other. Uh, and maybe talk to RTS and uh, get them to make a stop there, wherever that might be. <laughs> so there's room for all age groups here and uh, no one group's uh, needs need outshadow the needs of another group. Uh, you mentioned uh, seniors, and obviously when it's when it comes to housing, that is a central piece of this. Senior housing, uh, whether we're talking about rent prices, median housing stock, all three are major issues. And now the county has identified those as major issues across the entire county. How would you mm -hmm. like to see uh, the city uh, work with the county in addressing some of these housing challenges that it's going to face over the next five to 10 years? Well, on the one hand, we need to see what we have here, what might or might not be available to build in the future. I know that the county's got a lot of open land, not too far, you know, outside uh, any of the major uh, centers in Geneva. Really, we got to just, I got to look at the studies and see what they came up with. Obviously, you know, since I left the Board of Supervisors, I'm about 10 months behind here, but uh, there is room. And if there is a will, there is a way. And uh, it's really a question of are we building for people in need of housing or are we just building it and hoping they'll come? Either way, uh, it's, it's a no-lose situation for the county, certainly. And uh, it's probably a no-lose situation for Geneva either. I know we have several buildings in the area that are largely dedicated to seniors. So, uh, I mean, are there people trying to get here that can't? So the, really the first thing I would do is go to the Geneva Housing Authority and see what's what's going on with all that. And my last question for you, yes. uh, you've mentioned it in the beginning, civility. It's very important to your campaign. Uh, how will you work with others not knowing exactly what the makeup of city council will be next year? Well, for oh, sorry about that. For one thing, uh, you know, I have 25 plus years of military experience in two branches of the armed forces, and I was a member of the County Board of Supervisors, which is very civil with each other. The bottom line is just no finger pointing, no name calling. I also have about four years on the city's board of ethics. And yes, we've been vilified because, oh, we're picking on. No, it's about the code of ethics, not about our political beliefs. Thank you. Um, you start by setting a personal example. All right. As a member of the Freemasons, I am obliged to become a better man each day. How do I do that? By trying to be nice to everybody. Yeah, I've been burned by people I'm nice to that. Ha ha. Got him. Got his $20 bill. Whatever. Um, just set an example. Let it be their sin, not mine. Secondly, um, visit everywhere in the city. Go to all the businesses. I, I live downtown, so I, I tend to go in all the businesses, say hi to the owners, maybe buy something, uh, you know, in each business on, on any given day. Make it feel like I'm there. I'm present. Um, be at city events. You know, show your face. Talk to people. You know, right now, running for office is, you know, you don't want to be too obvious and in their face, but at the same time, you do have to get out there. Um, and you have to be, for example, you know, the touch a truck event. I went to that. Uh, a lot of middle school kids and their parents are there. Hey, I had teachers, you know, people I knew. I went to two of the fire department events, the open house. Again, lots of kids there. You know, I, I felt this warm sense of community. And uh, then I went to the memorial service yesterday uh, evening. And I, I always go to that regardless. You know, the 9-11 ceremony, anything that the city hosts you want to be there and you want to be the person that's not protesting something or the person that's not disparaging anybody that's just the start that's basic respect and um you know i mean i'm different i'm from new york city i got my idiosyncrasies the military teaches you certain things so you know maybe i come on too strong to some people but your sense of honor your sense of responsibility and above all public service. What does that mean? I'm not running because I need an ego boost. Thank you. I don't. Uh, I could spend the time sorting socks, but public service. You're serving. You're taking the time out of your day to serve others, to help others, to help your community. I mean, that's really it. And when you're in a city council meeting, you need to be professional. You go to your day job and start calling your boss names. No, you're not going to last very long. In an elected position, you know, they're not going to throw you out. We don't have that in our city charter. So I would want to go to a city council meeting and build bridges. And what that means is fine. If somebody calls me a name, I don't call them one back. I'll just suck it up, 
yeah, maybe maybe I'll complain to the ethics board or something. But no, I will not, you know, get into a finger pointing pissing match, excuse my French, with any other counselor, no matter who they are. So the trick is what serves the greater good. That's really it. And uh, and being civil about it, showing up on time, um, being positive and not using city government as a social experiment. There's any number of ways you could set a better example than we've had. And, uh, you know, I'm good to my word. You know, is I, if people want to call me, they have my palm card, they call the number, you know, I'll, I'll pick it up. So we start with that connection, civility. We'll go from there. James, appreciate the time. Thanks so much for taking it today. Thank you. Have a great day. That'll do it for this edition of FLX Today. If you'd like to hear more conversations like this one, check out the show on your favorite podcast platform or subscribe to the FingerLakesOne.com YouTube channel. Have a great day and we'll see you next time.